Good evening and welcome to Newswire. My name is Valerie and today I'm going to talk about NASA's Perseverance rover sending first color images of Mars. On February 18th, NASA's Mars Perseverance rover sent back its first color images from the surface of the red planet. The first high resolution color image shows a barren dusty landscape with the shadow of the rover seen on the ground. Another picture was of the yellow rocky ground underneath the rover's wheels. The rover left Earth last July and will spend the coming years on a mission to search for signs of ancient microbial life on Mars and collect samples to be returned to Earth from diverse environments. Scientists believe that 3.5 billion years ago, Mars's Jezero Crater, a 45 kilometer wide depression containing particles of an ancient river delta, was the site of a large lake, and they think that although the water is gone, some evidence of life could be waiting somewhere within the crater, or even along its 600 meter tall rim. On February 20th, a voice recording from a microphone attached to the rover released sounds obtained from the Jezero crater. About 10 seconds into the recording, a Martian breeze is audible for a few seconds. The first panorama shots of the rover's landing location were also released on Monday. The full video of the Perseverance landing on Mars is available to watch, being described as the seven minutes of terror by NASA. The video captures the world's most intimate view of a Mars landing, showcasing the full descent and landing of the rover on the red planet. The team working on this mission are planning on taking weather observations using the Mars Environmental Dynamics Analyzer instrument attached to the rover, a key step in the search for signs of life on Mars. The rover's plan to characterize the planet's geology and past climate, pave the way for human exploration, and be the first to collect Martian rock for in-depth analysis using subsequent NASA and European Space Agency missions in the future. The Mars Perseverance 2020 missions is part of NASA's Moon to Mars exploration approach, which includes Artemis missions to the Moon that will help in preparation for human exploration of the Red Planet. We're now going to move on to Sarah for the next story. Thanks Valerie. So the story I'll be covering today is Meghan and Harry's interview, which is one of Ireland's largest viewings this year. The explosive interview by, conducted by Oprah Winfrey was aired on RT2 on Monday night. It aired from 9.30pm until 11.15 and it garnered traction of about 700,000 viewers. It was also estimated that about 54% of viewers that were watching television at the time were tuned into the interview. Prince Harry and Meghan struck out at the legitimacy of the British monarchy with multiple allegations of lack of support and security for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, along with their son Archie, who was unborn at the time of the unfoldings. Meghan described in detail how the scrutiny of the British press affected her so severely to the point where she said to Oprah that she just didn't want to be alive anymore. The royal family made a statement on Tuesday evening expressing that they were saddened to learn the full extent to the difficulties of Meghan and Harry's situation. The Queen stated while some of the issues were raised, particularly that of race, are concerning and um, some recollect recollections may vary, but they are taken seriously and will be addressed by the family in private and that Harry, Meghan and Archie will always be loved royal members of the family. Meghan's father came forth on Monday and also said that he was upset upon hearing that Meghan was suicidal to Oprah and, she also, and he also felt that Harry had not supported her all that well. Mr. Markle, who has been estranged from his daughter since he worked with paparazzi photography before a wedding, said he did not believe the royal family were racist. Thanks so much for that, Sarah. It definitely was an interview that the whole world was watching. Um, we will be looking at SU elections from next week onwards as campaign will start on who's going to be the next president and other officers and part-time officers for next year's student union. Um, this campaign will be very different to any other years that have ever been in DCU, with campaigning pretty much reserved to online forums and to Zoom and to social media. How this works to candidates' advantage will surely be an interesting one to watch. Um, so we will be starting uh, covering and if there's anything you would like us to cover in particular, please do get in touch at DCU Newswire on Instagram or on Twitter. And let us know your thoughts on the news we covered today. Thanks so much for that. Uh, take care. Good evening and see you next week.